Hey, hey, it's Miss Ferris from Washington Elementary School, and I teach E2 Montessori, so I have third, fourth, and fifth graders in my classroom. Um, come read with me. Today, we're going to be reading Swamp Angel by Annie Isaacs. So, Swamp Angel. On August 1st, 1815, when Angelica Longrider took her first gulp of air on this earth, there was nothing about the baby to suggest that she would become the greatest woodswoman in Tennessee. The newborn was scarcely taller than her mother and couldn't climb a tree without help. Although her father gave her a shiny new ax to play with in the cradle, like any good Tennessee father would, she was a full two years old before she built her first log cabin. By the time she was full grown, she was second to none in buckskin, performing eye-popping wonders in the bogs and backwoods of Tennessee. What do you notice right away about the author's voice? Does her tone help you know what to expect in this story? So think about that question either by yourself or talk with a family member at your house. So what do you notice right away about the author's voice and how does her tone help you know what to expect about this story? I'll give you a second to think. Remember, you can pause the video. All right, I'm going to keep on reading. When she was 12, a wagon train got mirrored in Dejection Swamp. The settlers had abandoned their covered wagon and nearly all hope besides. Suddenly, a young woman in homespun dress tramped toward them out of the mist. She lifted those wagons like there were twigs in a puddle and set them on high ground. It's an angel, cried the Gaspel pioneers. Ever since that time, Angelica Longrider has been known as Swamp Angel. To this day, stories about Swamp Angel spring up like sunflowers along the wagon trails, and every one of them is true. Once upon a summer in the Tennessee wilderness, there prowled a huge bear with a bottomless appetite for settler's grub. Why, that varmint which ripped the door off a food cellar and gobble up the whole winter's rations without waiting for a napkin. It came to be known as Thundering Tarnation because those were the words most commonly heard when he was spotted in the neighborhood. Many tried, but none could catch that low-down pile of pelts. He was fast and wily, and his fur so thick the gunshot never reached his skin. Before long, Thundering Tarnation had cleaned out half the root cellars in Tennessee. The settlers were desperate with no food to get them through the long winter ahead, so they sent word across the land of the competition to kill that bear. The reward for the successful hunter was to be Tarnation's enormous pelt, equal to a whole year's hunting and worth a lot more on account of his fame. Beyond that, the winner would earn a powerful reputation and the title of Champion Wildcat. Now it's well known, and a fact too, that Tennessee daredevils are, daredevils are as plentiful as dewdrops on corn. Pretty soon, there was a long line of men in coonskin caps waiting to sign up for the hunt. But when Swamp Angel stepped in line, one of those buckskins called out, Hey, Angel, shouldn't you be home mending a quilt? She says, Quilton, quilton is, a, is men's work. Well, how about baking a pie, Angel? I aim, too, she says, a bear pie. Their hoots and taunts didn't stop Swamp Angel from signing up and setting out to find that bear. Tarnation left a pretty clear trail. The first hunter was found wearing an empty mossless bucket. A silly grin on his face. Seems he'd tried the sweet approach and got licked in more ways than one. It took 10 strong men to rescue the next hunter from his own bear trap. A third set out with a hardened hickory club and ended up waist deep in toothpicks. Another was discovered, wandering in circles, clutching two fistfuls of fur. His head was completely bald, his beard mighty scarce, Seemed he traded pelts with thundering tarnation and got the worst of the bargain. Soon, Swamp Angel was the only one left who hadn't met up with tarnation. 
until one morning she awoke from dozing in the shade of the creek to find that four-legged forest of stubble staring at her across the stream. They faced off for a few minutes. Varminate, said Angel. I'm much obliged for that pelt you're carrying. Grrr, said Tarnation. Then they waddled into the stream and commenced to fight. Swamp Angel took hold of that bear and tossed him so high he was still on the way up at nightfall. Even when the first star came out, there was no sign of him. Angel began to think she had lost him in the sky. Now, Angel was bound and determined to get Tarnation's pelt. Just at that moment, a tornado whirled by with a spout clear up to the clouds. Swamp Angel grabbed hold of it and swung the twister around like a giant lasso in the heavens. She roped that bristled bandit and brought him crashing back to earth. Locked in a bear hug, Swamp Angel and Thundering Tarnation wrestled across the hills of Tennessee. They stirred up so much dust that those hills are still called the Great Smoky Mountains. They fought three days and three nights without a break. On the fourth day, they wrestled their way into a lake 50 feet deep. Tarnation pinned Angel to the muddy bottom with one of his gigantic paws. To get a breath of fresh air, she had to drink a whole lake dry. That was mighty refreshing, said Angel. But it didn't look good for Angel. Down in the muck under the mountain of Maine, no matter how she struggled, she could not free herself from Tarnation's paw. Then Angel had an idea. She opened her tobacco pouch and emptied it onto the end of Tarnation's nose. He sniffed, threw back his head, and sneezed so hard the mud flew off the lake bottom, and Angel with it. She hiked back 10 miles from where she had landed, and to fight commenced once more. Swamp Angel and Tarnation finally grew so tired they fell asleep, but that didn't stop them. They wrestled in their sleep. Tarnation snored louder than a rock slide, while Angel snored like a locomotive in a thunderstorm. Their snoring rumbled through the earth, tumbling boulders and shaking tree trees loose. By morning, they had snored down nearly the whole forest. I didn't even know snoring could do that. The second biggest pine tree in Tennessee landed smack beside them. At the top of that tree was a beehive the size of a hill, oozing rivers of honey. After five days without food, Tarnation couldn't resist. He rolled over in his sleep and sank his jaws into the sweet, syrupy torrent. torrent. As he guzzled and slurped, Swamp Angel snored down one last tree. It felt right on top of Thundering Tarnation. That bear was dead as a stump and considerably flatter. When Angel awoke and saw what had happened, she plucked off her hat, bowed her head, and offered up these words of praise. Then found it, varmint, if you weren't the most wondrous heap of trouble I'd ever come to grips with. So Angel just called Thundering Tarnation the most wondrous heap of trouble she had ever dealt with. What do you think she means? How do you think that Angel feels about Tarnation's death? So think to yourself about that question or talk to a family member. What do you think she means by that? By saying that Thundering Tarnation is the most wondrous heap of trouble she had ever dealt with. And how do you think that she feels about his death? I'll give you a minute. Remember, you can pause the video. All right, I'm going to keep on reading. That night, Tarnation fed everyone in Tennessee, I can tell you. It was the biggest celebration the state had ever known. There were bear steaks and bear cakes, bear muffins and bear stuffing, bear roast and bear toast. To wash it all down, there was berry wine. You could hear waistcoat buttons popping as far away as Kentucky. The leftovers filled all the empty storehouses in Tennessee just before the first snowfall.
Swamp Angel decided to keep Thundering Tarnation's pelt as a rug. It was too big for Tennessee, so she moved to Montana and spread that bear rug out on the ground in front of her cabin. Nowadays, folks call it the short grass prairie. Now you may think no more was ever seen of Thundering Tarnation, but that's not the case. Back when Angel threw him up in the sky, he crashed into a pile of stars, making a lasting impression. You can still see him there any clear night. Thanks for reading with me. Have a great day. Bye.